you have to be like a tree. You have to have strong roots. You have to have a strong trunk, which is your legs and stability in your core where it moves. But then you have to be very loose from the kind of the tits up. I'm at a gypsy. And that that's the, my perspective. You know, I try to yeah. never focus on the result of it. So focus on the action of it. So who is doing it the best <clears throat> right now in your mind, in the professional uh, realm of racing a dirt bike? <clears throat> Technique wise, I will go with, um, I go with, a a jet Lawrence. Yep. A Roxon, but Roxon's wrist guards to me affect him a little bit. As you can see, when you watch him ride, it's a little bit of this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Watch, watch some of his races and you'll see this happen, right? Because that's what's happening. It's hitting here. And so when mm. his wrist, when his wrist goes to this point and it can't go down any farther, then this is going to push this down when he gets in some tricky sections with when he gets into a battle with uh, Cooper, you see kind of him get affected more, mm. right? When things are happening super quick, but when he can ride smooth and clean, then man, he's, he's awesome. But when things are happening a little bit faster, I see him get a little bit more affected from, from that. You know what I mean? So mm. I'd say I put him in there with a the technique, Christian Craig, of course, with a technique, uh, head wise, I would definitely put, um, you know, Cooper Webb. Um, I definitely put him with the, the, the most mental strength. Uh, fitness wise, I will put Tomac. Mm. I just think that if, when it comes down to brutal, brutal, you know, times, and I believe it's can from where he most. lives. You know, I think a lot of people. <clears throat> I just believe people are making mistakes living in at sea level when this this sport's called a a cardio sport, so to speak. Yeah, and most elite athletes live at altitude. <laughs> mm. So I feel that's where he gets his benefit from at living at 8,500 feet. Mm. Cause if anybody's ever spent a few weeks up at 8,500 feet and come down to sea level, you are a monster, dude. Mm. You are a monster. So his view, you know, he, he has more red blood cells, more oxygen. Da, da, da. So that's, that's a thing. But, um, you know, he is getting up there with age. He's been, you know, it, it's the sport He's wears you down. hammering it out a while. Wears you down. Yeah. There's a lot of young kids. Yeah, a lot of young kids. There's a lot of kids that have changed their ways. There's a lot of kids that have, uh, writers done this and that. So you're not going to always be that, that uh, dominant guy, you know? So, yeah, it's it's interesting that you said so that about, you know, um, oh, sorry, Ron. Uh, it's interesting you said that about Kenny because there was the, the last round, um, he was obviously in a pretty tight battle with Coop and there was a, a, when he was in the thick of that battle, the whoop section, the camera was actually side on in the whoop section and filming the dudes mm-hmm. pretty much go perfectly mm-hmm. side on. And you could actually see Kenny's uh, attack position break down over the race. And there was uh, right when he was mm-hmm. like really in the thick of that battle with Coop, the attack position that he had through those whoops uh, degenerated uh, quite significantly. And uh, yeah, to, to hear you make that point about the wrist braces, mm-hmm. that's actually quite interesting. I'd never, yeah. I forgot the dude was even wearing them. Yeah, we've wrist bra- you know, wrist braces and knee braces. And again, if you anytime, so if my knees, if I have thirty to forty percent of, if you know, mobility in my knees, and I and without knee braces, and my body is allowed to go this way efficiently, right, back and forth, and stay with the bikes, the bike staying underneath me. Well, if I'm locked up, my knees are locked up. Well, now I'm only bending at the hips. So now I counterbalance the bike. In this next Supercross, I want everybody to fucking watch every corner and watch how smooth Cooper is and how inside he can go on mm. these some of these corners. And I feel that is because he's just a teeny, teeny bit more efficient with his knees because his knees will move more than with a neck with a knee brace. And you can see it. You watch him go through a corner, and there's just a teeny, teeny, teeny little pause or hesitant or the body going the other direction with the other riders. Yeah. Okay, and that teeny, teeny, teeny is that two hundredths a second. Yeah. 200 of a second. Wow. He's 200 of a second faster than me. Fuck, man. By five laps, he's two seconds faster. He's two seconds ahead of me. That's a lot yeah. in Supercross, but it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's nothing. Yeah. And you, where, did he, where did he pass uh, Roxon last time? Very inside. Yeah. You know, so this is what I'm seeing over the jumps and things like that because you, you can't deny it. It's, it's, <laughs> you can't deny it. When you stiffen the body up, it's going to work more. When you stiffen the body up, you're going to limit it. Mm. You, I don't know how nobody can understand this. I don't know how nobody can see this. 
You know, you understand? What sport on earth wears braces? None. None. Unless they have some injury. You know, yeah. ski racing, them the hardest sport on knees that I believe. None of them wear Dude, knee braces. Dude, you're so right. Olympic skiing, downhill skiing, fucking hockey, moguls hockey, and shit. Hockey. Hockey. No yeah. no knee braces. Okay? Let's go to let's go to rugby. Let me see those guys wear a neck brace and knee braces. Let me see how they work. The Impossible. NFL impossible NBA impossible no, nothing because you're locking your head up and when you lock your head up at the high level you're affected you have to be like a tree you have to have strong roots you have to have a strong trunk which is your legs and stability in your core where it moves but then you have to be very loose from the kind of the tits up and that's like a tree it's strong at the bottom it has mobility in the middle and then it has you know stability in the middle keep it there but also allow movement but then at the top is very loose to withstand whatever direction that wind's coming from so the same thing i need to control the bike with my feet be one with it at my hips stabilize it and balance it through my core and my back and that will allow my arms to be loose and my head to move with my body but if my head is locked up here that's like turning the tree upside down and you're going to have more movement you're always going to be counterbalancing yourself Whatever my head goes this way and hits this, it's going to exaggerate that movement as you see things with Marvin. <clears throat> when I go over the bars, I can't tuck my head, so now I'm a lawn dart. When I go over the bars, I can't get back. It's pushing my head down, and that's how you exaggerate everything. How do you initiate a front flip? By tucking your head. Mm. So if this is pushing your head forward, you're initiating that frontward direction, and that will have you have tight arms. That makes sense if your head's always kind of getting pushed forward from this thing getting pushed on your, in your head. You know, and then the thing that I see is people still wearing these old braces, these old neck braces. The first neck brace that came out was the most dangerous thing that's ever come out in motocross history. It, it, a carbon fiber strut that has no movement on it, that's two inches wide, that's resting on your spine. <laughs> what you're supposed to be tech protecting. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and everybody fell for it. Everybody fell for it. That is why fear is what mm. I'm talking about. Fear, a carbon fiber strut that has no movement on it, resting on what you're trying to protect your spine. <laughs> you can't tuck your head. You got to play it against your head. So every time that you go over the bars, it pushes your head, you know, you go forward, it pushes your head forward. You have this big plate sticking out. So now when you flip on the ground, you have something else to stick on the ground. Mm. Right? You have something else to get stuck somewhere. You don't want shit flying off you. <clears throat> it's just like the GoPro. You're an absolute idiot if you have a GoPro on your head. An mm. absolute idiot. Why is our head round so it can skin on the ground? Why can we... This is our box. The tuck and roll. Go to jiu-jitsu. What do they teach you how to do first? Tuck and roll. Go to gymnastics. What do they teach you how to do first? Tuck and roll. So if you put a GoPro on there, now you have this thing that's going to stop movement on your head, and that's where you start. That's where you can break that neck or stop that head from moving or doing its natural motion by skidding on the ground. Mm. Right? We're not supposed to be stopped. Have you ever seen somebody get knocked out and roll down a jump? It looked like he just got 14 more joints, didn't he? He became yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. loose; yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. That's why a drunk driver mostly always lives because he's yeah. so loose. He's so relaxed. Yeah. A stiff person is always going to break. A stiff person's always going to be affected. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. this is my whole thing behind it is you're stiffening yourself up. You're limiting yourself. You're causing more problems that don't need to be there. You're putting something on you for this one in a billion chance. One in a billion. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.